Hey friends, and welcome to another episode of the podcast. On today's episode, we're heading up to the Sioux, Sioux St. Marie, to talk to Ken and Wilda from Bird's Eye Outfitters. Hope you enjoy the podcast. My guest today, as I said, Ken and Wilda from Bird's Eye Outfitters. Friends, how are you? Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. Coming to you from two locations. <laughs> which is which is fine, right? You guys got to operate the business and operate the house and all of that stuff. And it's been a couple months, right. Ken, since I've been able to see you guys in person. But we wanted to jump on this conversation and talk a little bit about the last 14 months and then what the what the remainder of 2021 looks like and beyond. But for people who might not be aware of the store because during COVID there was a whole bunch of people who have discovered the UP, right? They couldn't travel where they normally went. And so they discovered, Hey, Michigan's a pretty amazing place to travel. And they went to the UP. Can you guys walk through your, your around year five, the nexus of the store? What was the, the kind of thing that pushed you over the edge to create a store? And what does the store do up in the Sioux? Put your feet up and kick back. (laughs) I got all the time in the world, man. So, so many, yeah, so many great things, so many great reasons. It, it uh, and will it jump in anytime? Uh, but I, I guess at the onset, you know, um, when Will and I got together, and, and we had worked for other people for a long time. You know, she was a risk manager for eighteen and a half years, and <clears throat> I'd run a boys and girls club, and then worked for the university, and we just always had this idea of something that needs to happen in Sault Ste. Marie and the Eastern Upper Peninsula. And it was, you know, we love the area. And, and we listened to people say, oh, there's nothing to do, or it's cold, or whatever. And, and so, you know, we thought, how can we celebrate what we've got around us? And what is it that we can do? We don't want to be part of the problem. We want to be part of the solution. So how do we get a paradigm shift and get people to think about things a little bit differently and, and, and really not take for granted what we're surrounded by. There's nowhere else on the planet that you have access to this much fresh water and this much wilderness combined. You know, it's such a unique area that, so, so we decided, you know, we need to be able to provide um, education to let people know that, you know, it's safe to get out there and then also make them comfortable. And so let, let's pivot a little bit there, guys. And Wilda, I'll, I'll go to you first. What has the last 14 months been like for you guys as small business owners in the Sioux? What's it been like? Um, okay, so we actually, okay, so a blessing and uh, a little bit of a challenge at the same time. Because, so, you know, um, we started, when we started uh, Birds Eye Outfitters, we actually had like a um, another, um, well, two things we had, we had a uh, roasting company come in and, and help us start a cafe. Right. And then we also had um, Flanagan's goat, which is a friend of ours come in and, and they started, you know, food because we weren't, that's, we did, that wasn't our initial thought process as far as food. Our, our initial th- thought process was coffee, beer and gear. Right. So um, anyway, um, Flanagan's goat decided they wanted to do their own truck, a food truck. And so they left in um, the, the beginning of 2019. So we shifted to what, our passion was, was, which was like health and wellness. So when we thought about getting people outdoors and opening that store, the purpose was for health, like getting people moving um, and not, you know, instead of having to, you know, people roll their eyes, like, Oh, I got to exercise to be healthy. You know, it's like (laughs) getting out, getting outdoors and and going on a hike. That's healthy. That's mentally healthy. That's physically healthy. Um, Getting on a paddleboard, kayaking. Those are great. Like, ways to add health physical health without really like knowing that you're doing that so that was kind of a cool thing um in 2019 we kind of we shifted and we're like you know what we eat healthy and we love healthy you know like we love healthy foods that's how we feed our family so we decided because ken was like oh what are we gonna do you know now, now that flanagan's goat is gone i'm like let's just feed people the way we do we eat you know so we brought in boar's head meat. We brought in like smoothie bowls. We did like avocado toast, Buddha bowls. We did all the things that we love. And um, the coolest thing about doing that though, like initially we're like, oh my gosh, how are people going to receive this, right? Right. But through but through COVID, right? And people are going, oh my gosh, I've got to build my immune system. I've got to, you know, like everything that we do, like our, um, our, um, our chai mix that we make is homemade. Our Coke, our... Um, how cocoa mix is homemade. So a majority of the stuff 
that we make is homemade, right? And it's dairy-free, gluten-free. Like, so we're trying to do clean products. So people were starting to understand, especially like doctor's offices, that the things that we're providing are going to add health, you know, you know, um, for people. So um, anyway, so we, so the blessing was like um, that these different um, businesses, even local businesses, our own um, local businesses downtown actually started to come and try our food, you know, like, because a lot of people were shut down. We were shut down uh, for a few days a week, you know, which was something that we'd never done before. So with that being said, like business owners were gravitating to the businesses that were open on certain days. So certain people were open on, you know, Wednesday through Saturday or whatever the case may be. Right. So they started to try our food and, um, um, they were going, they looked at us and like, Oh my God, first of all, didn't know that you had food. Second of all, holy crap, you guys have amazing food. <laughs> so, you know, like, so people start, so that was the blessing with it. The, um, the challenge was, um, with, um, workers and students and, yeah. you know, like we pay unemployment, but we found that when we were getting shut down to curbside, unemployment does not pay college students, but yet we pay unemployment for college students, you know? So it was a really tough thing. So Ken and I had to really shift, especially coming into the, or this past like fall winter, right? Um, the cool thing is, is we kind of had the, this, like uh, a year or so prior to COVID happening, we actually had one of those globes because we wanted to do, we, Ken and I like to do silly like do we just like to do things different like you ask our employees they're like uh what are they gonna do now <laughs> you know but it, but it's super fun they love that they love that um the experience so anyway um so we already had a globe well when covid hit last summer we're like okay let's get a couple more well they jacked the prices up because other people had the same yep. ideas and so um we're like shoot so now we're tr we're gonna pay all this money to get these little globes in to be able to have to continue to have our um, college students working who can't get unemployment. Well, the, it it feels like we're in a better space now. Vaccination rates are coming up. Things are, right. are opening up. We're starting to figure out no masks, masks that that sort of dance that we're we're doing right now, right? <laughs> yes. um, yeah. But what do you, what do you guys feel this summer is going to be like for you uh, compared to last summer? You know, because like I said there was a whole crop of Michiganders that discovered the state in a way that they hadn't before. And I'm wondering if you guys a felt any of that and what do you think will be the echoes of that in this summer and beyond? That's one, one other aspect that we haven't really talked about it, about our businesses that we've got the, the guide service and rentals for yep. kayaks and snowboards and hiking and snowshoeing and so on and so forth. We, you know, we want to get people out. So, you know, we saw everybody was just, kind of iffy you know you had the, the the full range of attitudes right people that were like ah it's nothing i'm not wearing a mask and you know you see that every day and it, it, it was <laughs> we, we stuck to the guidelines pretty closely um but we we saw a lot of people and i'm, I'm sitting on michigan trails advisory council and, and we talk about trail usage and this past year was a banner year for for all of those things, you know, people were out on the trails, but with added, well, with an increased volume of people, you've also got increased maintenance and, and when there's demand and things happen, trails get widened, et cetera, Well, et and people and people didn't know, they don't know how to take care of a trail. They don't know about packing, um, you know, like uh, packing in and packing out, you know, like- Being conscious. Right, being conscious. So the, what we, we loved that people, because that's our passion, right? We want people to get outside. Um, and that was a, a huge, you know, we thought, oh my God, this is so awesome. People are coming out, they're discovering like the trails, they're getting outside, they're moving. It's what we like wanted them to do. The problem was there were so many people, they're like, oh, hmm, let's throw garbage here. So we spent days collecting garbage from beaches and you saw that a lot of locals were like, get those people out of here, get them out of here. By the, end of the, <laughs> by the end of the season, like they, 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 they said, shut down the bridge, shut down Wisconsin, any access from Wisconsin to Michigan to the upper peninsula and the bridge to the upper peninsula because of the, um, how, um, trashy, like they were just like the, the amount of garbage. And you know what, Ken and I were like, you know what, they don't, you don't know what you don't know. 
you don't, you know, like we have to educate people. And so Ken being on the Michigan Trails Advisory Council, like, you know, and, and, and we did see the influx. We got, saw an awesome influx of people um, coming to the UP. We met people, so many people from like New York and California and Texas, like all those states that were just shut down. Um, a lot of people gravitated to this area, but they, you know, the blessing is they did see the beauty of um, of what we have and so we really appreciate that because they actually you know it's it's them coming and supporting us so we um that was a huge weight off of our shoulders so you know um that helped um I think to help balance out our, our business a little bit but um on the on the on the other side of that came the knowledge that we have to educate people now um to going out and really experiencing the trails. When I came up in January, you were a tremendous help in me finding trails to, to hike around because I had not hiked that area of the UP before. So I can't say enough great things about the work that you two are doing. If people are thinking of coming up this summer, this fall, this coming winter, what's the best way for them to get a hold of you? Website, Instagram, wh where should they find you? Uh, well, we're at the store a lot of the time. <laughs> yes. We have we have a um, we have a web page. It's birdseyeoutfitters.com, and uh, we also have a Facebook presence as well as an Instagram presence. Um, we haven't uh, jumped the shark yet to hop on TikTok and do anything there. But is uh, it is this the part of the interview where I'm supposed to say you guys would kill it on TikTok? Is that what I'm supposed to? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We got we have some awesome people that work for us. You know, we're ex, we explore all of our uh, the talents that we've got. I mean, for employees, and man, it's just amazing. You find artists, you find graphic design people, you find people that are wordsmiths, and if everybody's involved and in helping out with what we're doing, then you know there's more of a buy-in. There's a, a sense of pride in it. Absolutely. So, so we've got, uh, point being, we've got people um, working on Instagram piece and, and the Facebook piece and the, the web page and other um, marketing advertising things, but you know, uh, they're right there. They know it. So who better to, to, to speak to it? I do. So I do want to mention one more thing um, really quick because we've had people that came up this past winter. So, okay. Outhouse actually, so we put on different events also. So like this past winter, we did a lot of like lighted snowshoe yep. um, trail events and, and people were loving it. And people came from as far down as like, I think um, Sterling Heights, Michigan. And they're like, we saw that you do, you're doing this. And they came up like on one of the coldest days, but oh, we yeah. did it. I mean, it was, it was awesome In because the middle of lighted, nowhere. A lighted snowshoe trail is a phenomenal experience. And so at the end of it, we always have like a little fire. We've got like s'mores kits for people so that when you come off the trail, you can make your own little s'more and um, and just kind of like celebrate your your little trek, you know? So another thing though, um, in one of our biggest events, and we did it in 2019, we weren't able to do it in 2020, obviously because of COVID, but um, the um, downtown... Sault Ste. Marie area is um, connected by seven bridges to like the greater Sault Ste. Marie area. And so we um, created seven bridges, seven brews, and it's a 5k, 10k. And we partner with different breweries. I, the first year it was Right Brain. This year it's going to be New Holland. And um, after the race, we do an island uh, an island themed party, but all those proceeds are go to towards um, trail development. And we do have a trail um, that we recently blazed and we just got permissions to put a trailhead up. So that's going to be, um, up and coming. That'll be an awesome new trail to, um, to be able to explore. But, um, with that trail, um, area, because it's like, a, I think a 300 plus acres, we're going to, um, to work with an engineer or designer to put a mountain biking trail in within that same area. So, um, so we're doing like a lot of fun things and, and, you know, people want to support, um, some of the, uh, trail development that we're doing, like, you know, jump on seven bridges, seven brews, um, or uh, any other like events that we're doing. And you can see that on our bird's eye outfitters, Facebook page or bird's eye out is our Instagram handle or whatever you call it. Um, uh, and then outhouse consortium is also like on, um, we have a website for that and yeah yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. Eric, if you run into uh isaac over at the knickerbocker be sure to thank them because those guys are they're going to be a great uh 
partner this year for Seven Bridges, Seven Brews at New Holland. I will absolutely do that. Ken and Wilda, thank you so much for the time. Have an awesome day. We'll talk to you soon. Okay, Thanks, cool. Sarah. Thank you. All See right. you guys. See ya.